The Woodsmith Polyhalite Mine, Britain's first large-scale mine in decades, by Anglo-American. This high-tech supermine, once completed, will be the largest and highest-grade polyhalite mine in the world. That's because a polyhalite seam with such high purity and in a location that allows processing and shipping to be viable has only been discovered in the UK. A rare commodity that only Britain possesses and thanks to this mine could see that £100 billion flows into the UK economy over the next 50 years. Before we get into the mine, it's important to first briefly talk about what polyhalite is because it's the new kid on the block in the fertiliser world. Polyhalite is a type of potash which some experts claim to be the Rolls-Royce of potash. Potash is a potassium-rich salt-based mineral which is commonly used as fertiliser all over the world. The unique advantage of polyhalite over other common forms of potash is that it contains four out of the six key essential nutrients that all plant life needs to grow. These key nutrients are potassium, magnesium, calcium and sulphur. Under the brand name Poly4, Anglo-American will be looking to market it as a multi-nutrient, low-chloride, ultra-low carbon fertiliser, certified for organic use that can increase crop yields as well as improve and protect soil conditions. When compared to the two most commonly used potassium fertilisers, Poly4 produces 93% less CO2 than sulphate of potash and 85% less than muriate of potash. I will provide links in the description for those who would like to learn more about Poly4 as it's too big a topic for me to cover fully in this video. Located in, or should I say under, the North York Moors National Park in Yorkshire, England, two miles south of the town Whitby. Here is where they found a potential resource of 2.69 billion tonnes of polyhalite, which would give the mine a lifespan of around 100 years and an identified reserve of 290 million tonnes, which gives the mine a lifespan of over 30 years. Originally deposited around 260 million years ago, when an ancient sea dried up, the polyhalite was actually discovered by accident. The polyhalite was first discovered back in the 1930s by oil prospectors who were drilling for oil. Only decades later was it realised to be a valuable mineral, thanks to two geologists whom which the mine was fittingly named after. Why is it called the Woodsmith Mine? Well, after the, after the two of us. <laughs> it overlaps in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Polyhalite had been found in an oil well, but everybody regarded it just as a mineralogical curiosity. And it wasn't until somebody did some experiments creating a fertilizer with it that people realized, God, this is really something. But then the news comes up, look what we found. In some places we found it was 80 meters thick. To find it in the sort of quantity that we have here is absolutely unique. There, there isn't anything like it anywhere in the world. This is the marvel about it. Uh, not only that this thing exists, this colossal deposit, but by extraordinary chance, it comes ashore in North Yorkshire and right at Whitby, it's at the depths where you can mine it. That's how it began. The mine is set to go into production in 2027 and throughout construction will create over 2,000 jobs for the local area. The mine near Whitby will be accessed via two main shafts. Each of these shafts will be 1.5 kilometres deep. That's almost one mile deep, which will make it the deepest mine in Europe. Due to its location at much treasured national park, strict criteria were set in place in order for the mine to be built. In order to not disturb the protected area of natural beauty, the mine had to be designed with minimal impact. In fact, unless you have a helicopter, you would never even know it was there. And even then, it would just look like any other farm buildings. The mine has been designed to be completely invisible to passers-by. They even built a curve into the access road so anyone driving by would only see woodland. When constructing a deep mine, you would typically have large winding towers at the surface which would be used for lowering and lifting people, machinery and material. But being located in a national park, 
Woodsmith's giant winding towers, also known as head frames, will be hidden in 60 meter deep chambers to minimize visual impact, a world first in mining. These chambers will be constructed using an engineering method called diaphragm walling. Once finished, the first 60 meters was excavated to house the 45 meter tall winding towers and other infrastructure. The main mine shafts will then be mechanically sunk using an innovative third generation machine called a shaft boring road header, a design inspired by tunnel boring machines. The SBR is faster and safer than traditional drill and blasting methods. Since being lowered into the fore shaft, the SBR has now begun its one mile journey down to the polyhalite. Rotating in a star pattern, the cutting head can cut 200 mm deep with each pass. Every five of these cycles, the shaft becomes one meter deeper. Material is then sucked back up the shaft and into skips, which are then hoisted to the surface for either reuse or clearance. As it descends, depending on the rock formation, the SBR will line the shaft with either steel or concrete, or both depending on the geology. To allow for faster operation, the liner deck can move independently to the cutter head below. The SBR is also equipped with two robotic probes which can test the ground ahead for safer excavation. It can be remotely operated from control rooms on the upper deck or from the surface and capable of fully autonomous operation for long periods of time. All this makes for a safer and more efficient shaft sinking process. The mineral seam will then be mined using a combination of drill and blast and continuous mining machines, which will then feed flexible conveyor belts that will take it back to the production shaft. The ore is then hoisted up to 360 meters below the surface, where it is then transferred to the mineral transport system. The mineral transport system is truly a remarkable feat of engineering. Once the ore is mined, it needs to then get to the materials handling facility at the Wilton Industrial Complex at Teesside, 23 miles away. To avoid the costs, complications and pollution involved with using traditional transportation services such as trucks and trains, a 23 mile long concrete lined tunnel is currently being dug between the Woodsmith Mine and the materials handling facility at Wilton. Once completed, the underground conveyor belt system will be the longest anywhere in the world. A tunnel boring machine is used to dig the tunnel. It started its journey at the Wilton site before heading for Woodsmith. The Wilton site is also where the concrete factory is located, which will supply the TBM with the segments used to line the tunnel. Like a giant mechanical worm, the TBM with its giant multi-rotor cutting head at the front nibbles away at the rock which then falls into the machine and is whisked away on a conveyor belt. Every few meters the TBM stops to install the giant concrete segments which are continuously passed down via a locomotive running through the middle of the TBM coming from the concrete factory on the surface. When a concrete ring is completed, a machine then grouts between the concrete lining and the rock to secure it in place. Once the lining is secure, the TBM uses hydraulic jacks to propel itself forward to continue cutting. The 23 mile long conveyor belt system, capable of transporting the ore at a speed of 6.5 meters per second, is then installed as well as a maintenance railway and some utilities and power cables for the mine. This all means that the ore never sees the surface until it reaches the mineral handling facility, which is then only a four kilometer short trip away to the port on yet another conveyor belt. Once at the mineral handling facility, the ore will go through several simple processing stages where it will be turned into the final product. Arriving from its 23 mile journey, the ore will first be deposited in a storage shed. From here, an automated conveyor belt system takes the ore on a continuous production line around the facility. First it is crushed to a fine powder, then graded to remove any large pieces. Then, using a natural starch, it is then granulated to a uniform size. The granules are then screened and dried before being transported to the port for shipping. 
Thanks to its 88.8% purity, there is very little waste and no chemicals are used in the processing of polyhalite at all. The final leg of the journey will be in a 4 km long, fully concealed conveyor belt where it will be loaded into cargo ships at the Bran Sands Port Facility on the River Tees, which is the UK's northern gateway to global shipping routes. Here, Anglo-American will be able to ship up to 13 million tonnes of Poly 4 to customers around the world each year. The first ore is expected to be shipped in 2027. So why are people lining up to buy polyhalite? It's estimated that the population will reach 10 billion by 2050, which means more mouths to feed. Arable land is limited, so farmers are looking at ways to increase yields from the same amount of space. They are also looking at ways to farm in a cleaner and more sustainable way. Agricultural universities and research institutions have studied more than 80 broad acre crops in over 1,000 crop trials throughout 44 countries across five continents and they have consistently shown that polyhalite outperforms other potassium fertilizers in both crop yields and quality. If you enjoyed the content in this video, it would mean a lot to me if you could like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.